the mower that they should have never made probably will never make again. So for anyone that's ever seen one of these things or, or owned one, please write in and let us all know. And, uh, and of course, if anybody knows what it actually is, is it an MTD? Is it an AYP? Not that it really matters. It's certainly a stainless steel bodied lawnmower. And that stainless steel body is not ever going to really wear out unless you break it. I mean, it's not going to rot. And it's not going to be like these new crappy ankle biter MTD mowers that just fold up like an accordion, you know, like a pretzel, because that looks real safe. Now, it's never going to do that. And it doesn't have the crappy wheels in the front of those MTD mowers where it's just a piece of plastic and a bar that runs through it. Bar, I say. It's not an axle. It's, it's a piece of stick steel that, for some reason or another, in the front, those plastic wheels with no bearings, no bushings, they always seem to lock up and get jammed. And then you can't get them off. And of course, you can't heat it because you'll just melt everything and set it on fire. Yeah, kind of like this, uh, well, electric-powered green revolution mower that got caught on fire. So it's definitely not like any of these or those. So what we're going to do in this video is we got to tune it up. We got to clean it up. We got to tune it up. And that'll give everybody an opportunity to sort of see this thing a little bit closer. Um, I do take care of this machine. I owned it originally and sold it, started my channel on this machine. It was one of the first things that I did. So that was a long time ago. I want to go check out that video, see if I can pop a link in there. If not, sue me. Go back and look for it yourself. But I think it's just kind of fun to look through this thing. We'll go through it now. One of the things in this video, for those that are maybe a little bit more interested. Arch, why are you smoking while you're doing it? Listen, I'm going to do what the hell I want. It's late. I'm tired. I got to try to get a video out. But for those that are interested, and I probably should do another video on it, is... So if you look at this engine, right, this is what I call the clock style semi-automatic choke pain in the ass that when you, you you lean over and you shove that little lever over and that sets the clock. And then you when you put obviously you have to pull the engine bail brake down, right, to allow it to start, take the brake off of the flywheel. And then you got to race over to the pull and you got to get like all set up. So this way you get like some maximum choke and some because it, if it's working properly, it'll just It'll race off, man, like a rabbit. Just, phew, and it's gone. And choke's off. No more choke. No choke for you. I'm going to show you guys if you have a little bit of a problem with one of yours. Um, and it's not, un you know, unlocking or, or not releasing properly. Or you need, well, you need to adjust it. And, of course, it may also cause your engine to not start. Because if that whole bale assembly does not come back, and move through its extend extends properly and then return. Well, another thing that'll happen is it just won't it won't let the ignition off. Like it won't like the kill won't kind of like turn the ignition on, so to speak, because there's a little micro switch you'll, which you'll see in there. Um, you got to be able to allow that micro switch to go through its full travel, so it has to go off and on, off and on. So that's the other thing that can happen. So now I started with a new cable. I didn't show that. I put a new cable on. I didn't put anything fancy on it, just like a good aftermarket cable, a decent one. Start off with a new cable, do a tune-up, clean the plug, or put a new plug in it, get everything clean. And whenever you want to go work on that clock, in this case, I pressure wash the machine, and I got in there pretty good, but there was still dirt in there, right? But that clock, you got to clean your clock, fellas. You got to clean the clock gears. You got to make sure they're clean and, <clears throat> and lubricated and that they're moving on their own well. And, but you say, oh, well, it's getting stuck. Okay, just clean it. Get it clean, blow it out with some compressed air if you have that. And then when you find that segment somewhere in the video, I don't know if I'm going to put a timestamp on it or not, but it'll. I think it'll help. Those are pesky. They changed the design, thankfully. Um, sadly, I don't know how much longer they're going to have these motors around, but they'll be around. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. There's a couple, two, maybe three versions of the more modern choke design. But this is a very good engine, and it works very well. And I've been keeping it tuned. So we're going to go through that and go through all the other things. We'll take a closer look at this thing. Um, and I think it's just kind of a neat design. And it's the mower that was never meant to be. You know, it's sort of the curious case of why as a manufacturer would you do something like that on a basic push mower? I mean, you got a Honda motor, you got heavy duty. Is this their variant of a lightweight sort of commercial engine? 
Could be. Let's take a look at this thing. So this looks real good, right? We got a bit of wear here. And something happened here. I didn't do that. Somebody ripped that off. Must have ran over something, but I'm not touching that. Um, we might want to bend it down. I don't know. You don't want to be doing too many things. Let me give it a knock. Let's take the blade off. All right, blade's off. I did bang those things back. I'll show you later. It looks like it's pretty good shape. We'll clean that up. All right, this is obviously a mess, but we're going to put this back because we don't want water getting into that carburetor. We shouldn't have to rebuild the carburetor. I've done it a few times. If he hasn't screwed up, I looked in the tank, and it's not bad. I don't see any real dirt or anything in there. And there is a filter on the bottom of the tank. It's a little older design, but it's there. Hey, look. You see the side here. And she's dirty. A little super clean to clean this up. We'll brighten it up a little, a little cleaner. Let's get started. Sorry for the extra noise, fellas. It's really hot, so I got the fans on. All right, well, that air cleaner is shot. And you can tell because the plug is black. Other than that, it's not in terrible shape. Got the blade. Blade's in good shape. I just sharpened it. So, you know, I hit it with the pressure washer, and then I just, I like to clean both sides, make sure we're good to go. You know, I put all this stuff on. He could still have water in his tank. The other one does. So that's a problem. Let's flip it and put the blade on. And then we're going to do a spark test just to make sure. And then I want to check inside his tank. All right, so the choke mechanism, and I like to call this the clock, right? The choke clock. These are the older ones where if the handle is pulled back and we have it pulled back over there and tied back with some Velcro, as it's pulled back, that choke plate is open right now. You may not be able to see it, but it's open in there. If we pull it back, um, it should clock and move forward. And a lot of times they don't. See how they get stuck? And people don't realize that it's got to move. So what's happening here is, is it's getting stuck. Did you see that? See how it's getting stuck over here? This needs to come back a little bit more. Now I tried that, but it's a little bit out of adjustment. Not quite the right cable. So let me fool around with this. What we want to do is we want to try to make this a little tighter. Pulling back a little bit more on this mechanism. That hook there is still, that latch is not really releasing. It's got to come up and out of the way. So I want, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we have spark. So I'm going to go test for spark. And if we have spark, because this has to come back far enough to depress this switch. If we have spark, then, we'll, then okay. If not, then we've got to make a change up there. And so I have spark. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to release the bail, and I'm going to bend this arm that way a little bit, because it will pull on this lever more. And I, we'll try that first, and I think we'll be okay. Let's see. Just a little bit bit of a bend. Yeah, that should be better. All right, let me test it. Yeah, we're good to go. So the other thing I did too is I took my tranny mix, you know, I have a short on that, and I sprayed in all around all these lubrication points, even up in here, 
and wiped it, blew it with uh, compressed air, but go low pressure air, like 30 pounds max. Get it clean and lubricated. And worst case is you may have to take the carb off, which we still may have to do. We don't know yet. But see, watch. With that bail pulled back, the clock is working properly. All right. All right, let's keep moving forward. I'm going to get some oil and some penetrant in this. I couldn't even pull it out past a certain point. It was stuck. They di things get stuck. And it's, it's, uh, it's just sticky and dirty. Even though I washed it, but it was stuck. Something had a jam. Something over here. Anyway, let me get this going good. Then you keep pulling it and wipe off the excess. Get it going good. And uh, then we'll get a chance to look inside the tank. So I just wanted to peek into the bowl. I wiped it out with my fingers. I felt a little bit of junk, a little bit of sediment. No big deal. Um, make sure you clean around the carburetor really good. If you haven't cleaned the pressure washer or the hose and some gunk cleaner or whatever, don't, don't take the bowl off. Um, you'll knock junk in. And because it sits all around, even though I pressure wash, it's still sitting there. I noticed the gasket started to pull away as, as, uh, as well. So I had to kind of push that back with a screwdriver. I'm going to hit a little bit of gum out, like in through the jet area and just around it. And I'm going to blow it with some compressed air, about 15, 20, 30 pounds at a distance and put everything back. All right, check in here. Pulled it off. Uh, there's a filter down there. I blew everything out with compressed air. It was dry in here. It seems to be clean. All right, we'll put this back. The only thing I forgot to do is I forgot to blow through here. But if you were to do that, make sure you do very low pressure air. Maybe squirt a little gum out or something in there first. Uh, but I didn't really see enough sediment. It's just a little bit. I'm letting it sit. We'll put this top back on. This I pulled through when I lubricated and cleaned it with my tranny sauce. You can use uh, a little oil, chain lube, whatever. But you got to get it clean first and working good. So we'll put this back. And by the time I'm done with that, we'll check the oil because it just had it on its side. And just make sure there's enough in there and it's okay so we can start it and run it. We'll get it warm, we'll dump the oil. If everything works, good. All right, just check the oil, it'll look real good. Look, and it's dead perfect. But, you know, it may have settled, even though we've been turning it around, jostling it. So let's get it a good run, get it warmed up, we'll check it again. Oh, she's starting to look good. Okay, the uh, bale is off. In other words, the handle is off. So we'll pull this back, we're gonna leave it, right? I haven't pulled the handle back yet, so that's engaged. We got fuel in it. Like we check the oil, everything else is good to go. I'll go pull the handle back and then we'll race right against the choke timer. Oh yeah, one pull. Let's let it warm up. I know it's so noisy in here today. Can't help it. It is so hot. If I had another fan, I'd use it. Oh, that's like water. It smells a little gassy. Yeah, that's watery, fellas. That could be gas, too. Yeah, something ain't right with it. I think he got a little gas in it. Yeah, that was like too diarrhea like. Yeah, smell it? It's something's not right. Let's let that drain. Something happened. That's weird, right? All right, we'll be back. Let's get some real oil in it. Oh, fellas. Fellettes. This stinks. See how clear it is? But look at it. Look at the way it runs. There's no oil in this. This is, smell it. This is like gas. And super thin. And it's, it, um, in a way, like it cleaned the heck out of it, but... She's all clean inside now. Let's get some real oil in and get rid of this. I'll talk to him about it. 
I'm just going to use some of the uh, 1030 uh, high mileage Valvoline. That's not bad. I get it cheap too. Here, let's see. It's pretty good looking oil. Feels nice. 1030. It is a semi synth. I think all they really put in there, fellas, is just something to swell seals, right? To like, you know, nourish the seals. Synthetic blend, so it has to meet a minimum requirement. I'm in a daily dose of vitamins and minerals. Let's get that in there. About 12 to 14 ounces. I forget what it is. Shoot me. Go look up in your book. You can download it online. Go slow because you don't always get all the oil out. Um, and when you go to check it, I'll show you something about check it in a minute. But you got to make sure you're level. Otherwise, you're going to throw it off. Let me get this in there and I'll show you what I mean. All right, that was like 12 ounces I put it in. It's really full. I just want to scotch over. I forget what the manual says, something like 12.7 or whatever. Start off with 10 if you're not sure because it doesn't take much and it's real easy to overfill. Now, one more thing. I right, notice that the dipstick is on an angle. So if you put it in, and I used to say people would freak out over this. I used to say just turn it in like one, like half turn. You don't screw it in. Oh, you're an idiot. You're screwing it in. You don't know what you don't No, Listen, this thing's on an angle. Okay, so the oil is going to lay flat. Remember, on a flat surface, you got to be somewhere flat in your driveway or something. So imagine, right, you're going in on an angle. Here's your angle, but the level is flat. So as it washes over the dipstick, okay, you're going to have a cock, a different reading on the top than on the bottom. So an easy way to deal with that, if you're uncomfortable with screwing it in, oh, jeez, then just put, wipe it, put it in there, and then turn it backwards. It will not screw in. Just make sure that it's fitting flat, right? You're not, I'm not talking about screwing it in. I'm, oh, geez, I should make a short about that because people, they just, they just hear what they want to hear in their head. Then take it out, and I can look. You're not going to see it because that oil is so clean. There's just no way you're going to see that. But don't overfill it. So, so drop it in, like half a turn back, pull it out, you don't need to do that. You're an idiot. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Good, good. Comment. Call me an idiot. I don't care. YouTube loves that kind of crap. All right. Uh, let's check on the tires. There, they, this is this is an aftermarket. It's based similar on the Honda variant. These are a little bit better. You'll see them, right? They must have like a patent or whatever. Uh, for the color, it's the, the some of the real cheesy white ones just really are cheesy. You better replace those a lot because uh, they don't really capture a lot of the dirt, and some of them don't breathe well. And we were all talking about this. Uh, the actual Honda ones, I think, are the best ones for not just Honda, but for your Briggs. Barring that, if you want something cheap and you don't mind replacing a lot, well, for like these jobs where I save a few bucks and you know. And everybody gets to have the best of everything. I also picked up some where they came with the pre-filter. So I got the good Honda filter with the pre-filter on my Honda. But I found these. Look at how nice they fit. Right? They completely seal all the way around. Well, well what brand is it? I forget, fellas. I, I move quick in this planet here. And everything fits nice. They work good. They're a little bit better, a little thicker, a little bit better quality. I've been using them for a little while now. I just got them about a month or so ago. I like those. Um, so yeah, the fuel shut off, and if it gets, I notice that they get a little nasty after a while. Hold on. Now, I don't know if this helps. This is my tranny sauce, whatever. Maybe a little bit of spray lube, a WD in there. Um, I mean, I washed everything first, so if it's really dirty, it, it may not want to go for you. I have one on my pressure washer, and you know, like a factory Briggs. And I, I had to move it with a pair of pliers. And I've seen that happen. It doesn't leak, and it shuts off properly. So that's why I haven't changed it. But, I mean, I gotta move it. That's how stuck it gets. Turn this off if you're gonna store it. Because you don't want gas in your oil. And if he didn't check it, um, I mean, it could have been overfull. Why it wasn't overfull? I don't know. Maybe it just a lot of it evaporated. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just keep an eye out. I did these a couple of years ago. I believe these look like bearings. Let me get my glasses. I mean, I forget, but these are the heavy duty wheels. And I'd, for a time, I lost the caps. And I asked him if I found them and I asked him, Do you want them? He was like, No. 
you really should keep them. They're a little bit wobbly. Um, listen, they're a little grobbly, and I know it's hard to hear with all the fans on. Let's see. Let's see, can we move it? Yeah, it moves okay. So, that's doable. So let's put some of my tranny sauce on it, because this will go in on both sides and and on the adjuster and see yeah see how much easier that is yeah yeah they're moving now a lot of times you got to put oil because even though there's an oil in that tranny sauce it is mixed with uh, gas but the chain lube if it's a little stiff if it's not that stiff you can use the chain wax because that like is more like a dry it's going to wax up you got to put something in fellas don't cheap out now don't use grease <laughs> tracks dirt oh, i've heard that before stop it god you're going to get the dirt it's going to get listen you want to get it moving or you want to fight with it you pick you can have grease and lube with dirt or you can have dirt no grease and lube, and it's jammed. You pick.